The top stories tonight in Y News. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee orders the transfer of formerly pharmaceutical corporation director Lincoln Ong from Senate detention to Pasay City Jail as senators say he is once again being evasive with his answers. The Commission on Elections is set to decide next week on the voter registration extension. Ilusang Bagong Lipunan or KBL nominates former Senator Bongbong Marcos as the party standard bearer for the 2022 elections. Meanwhile, isang bayan convener sees probable tandem, tandem of Sara Duterte and Marcos in the coming polls. President Rodrigo Duterte pleads for peace to all political leaders and all other par others participating in the elections. The European Union announced its plan to impose a standard cable for all devices to reduce electronic waste. The United Nations' first virtual food system summit looks for recipes to tackle the dysfunction of food system globally. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Quezon City. Today is Friday, September 24, 2021. I'm Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. The Commission on Elections Management Committee will discuss next week the proposed voter registration extension. Comelec spokesperson Director James Jimenez says they will primarily consider the impact over the filing of Certificate of Candidacy on October 1 to 8. The Management Committee will recommend to the Comelec on bank whether it is feasible to have the voter register registered extended. The MANCOM will discuss the impact of voter registration extension on our preparations for the 2022 national and local elections, taking into consideration the realities on the ground, including the fact that our COMELEC officials are in fact falling victim to COVID due to constant exposure. The COMELEC unbanked decision may be released on September 29. Isambayan convener sees probable tandem of Sara Duterte and Bongbong Marcos for the 2022 national polls. This after the Kilusang Bagong Lipuna nominates Bongbong Marcos as standard bearer for the coming elections. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Retired Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio reveals what he believes is the strongest tandem in the presidential race for the 2022 national elections. The one Sambayan convener names Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio and former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. as the most probable pair to team up in the forthcoming filing of candidacy for the next polls. It's not a surprise that uh, uh, the uh, KBL has nominated uh, Bong Bong because he has always said that uh, he was running for a national office. Uh, and uh, there's still a possibility and uh, it's also, I think it's probable that it will be a team up with Sara Duterte and Bong Bong in the end because that would appear to be the strongest team and logically that will be the direction. This comes after the endorsement of Bongbong Marcos as the presidential candidate of Kilusang Bagong Lipunan Party for the 2022 elections. In a resolution, the party's official and members tagged Marcos as highly recommended standard bearer. Bongbong Marcos, on the other hand, expressed gratitude to the support of the KBL, but explains he has yet to announce what position he will be running for in the next year's election. Marcos only confirms, though, that he will run for a national position. You cannot rush these things, and uh, I, I fully intend to take um, all the available time that I have to make that to make my decision. Uh, again, it's uh, very important, and it's not something that should be rushed without having um, uh, the most complete knowledge about the situation, the political situation, at every level. 
Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Isambayan group is still optimistic to have a unified opposition presidential candidate in the upcoming 2022 elections. Dante Amento tells us why live. Yes, uh, Dante, good evening. Go ahead. William Isambayan, lead convener and former Supreme Court Associate Justice Antonio Carpio disclosed that they may reveal their presidential candidate on September 30. Currently, the selection process is not yet finished. Mayor Isco Moreno Dumagoso, Senators Manny Pacquiao and Ping Lacson are still included in the internal survey, though they have already announced bids for presidency. Isambayan stresses opposition candidates will beat the administration's standard bearer. Between the announcement and the filing, marami pang pwedeng mangyari. So, that's first. Number two, uh, hindi pa naman tapos ang usapin ng uh, unity. Tuloy-tuloy naman po ang usapin na magkaisa ang mga uh, kandidato. At sa tingin ko, uh, mas sa fragment, fragmented ang uh, admin na uh, candidates. Kasi kung titignan nyo, yung 16 million ni ni um, Presidente Duterte dati, kasama dyan si Bongbong, kasama dyan si Manny Pacquiao, kasama dyan si Alan Peter Cayetano. So, kar- karamihan sa kanila, hindi na niya kasama ngayon. So, yung kanyang 16 million, nabawasan na yan. William B. Sambayan added talks between Vice President Lenny Rubredo and former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV are also ongoing. The Isambayan aims to have a unified candidates for national oppositions from president down to senators. And that's the latest live from Quezon City. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Dante Amento reporting live. Former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV urged Vice President Danny Robredo to finally declare whether she intended to seek the presidency in the 2022 elections. Trillanes in a statement said he and the Magdalo group believe that now is the right time for the vice president to announce her political plans, considering that there is only one week left for candidates to file their candidacy. For her part, VP Lenny is very appreciative of the support she gets, but she emphasized that she is still that she still needs more time to decide and exhaust all possible avenues present the best chances for better governance come 2022 magtiwala kayo pagdating sa usapin ng halalan isa lang ang nasa isip ko siguruhin na mawakasan ang uri ng pamumunong ugat ng pagdurusa paghihirap at pagkamatay ng napakarami sa atin Mula pa ko sa deadline, umuusad ang panahon. Sa huli, mangyayari ang dapat mangyari. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte pleads for peace to all political leaders and all others participating in the elections. He made the statement when he led the inauguration of the new provincial hospital in Isulan, Sultan Kudarat, early this morning. He said if there will be violence, he will be forced to seek help from the armed forces of the Philippines or the AFP. Gusto ko sa lahat ng buong Pilipinas na peaceful and people can vote freely for their candidates and that the votes, there will be the votes and it will be counted correctly. Yun lang naman ang gusto natin lahat eh. Nobody wants trouble, nobody wants cheating. But minsan, uh, hindi kayo. But pass this on, this message to everybody outside here. Na sabi ko, nakikiusap na ako. I'm pleading, almost praying, that people will really uh, stick to the rule of law and avoid violence. Kasi pag hindi, unahang ko na kayo, then I will be forced to use the, the might of the military. Not for any purpose, but to see to it 
that the election is peaceful and violence free. The Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, or IATF, has expanded the list of individuals considered authorized persons outside of residence or APORs among the COVID-19 pandemic. One week before the filing of Certificates of Candidacy or COCs on October 1 to 8, the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases has included all aspirants for the May 9, 2022 elections, as well as poll workers as authorized persons outside residence or APORs. This include candidates filing their Certificates of Nomination, Certificate of Acceptance of Nomination for Party List Groups, and Certificates of Candidacy and Certificates of Nomination and Acceptance. Also included in the list are participants in the Solidarity Trial for COVID-19 Vaccines of the World Health Organization. Eligible patients who reside in areas under granular lockdowns may be allowed to leave their residence for purposes necessary for the clinical trial. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the IATF approved the inclusion during their meeting on Thursday. Kasama sa APOIS ang chairperson, president, or in their absence, ang secretary general, or authorized representative ng political party, sectoral party, at iba pa. Aspirants o kanilang authorized representatives, companions as authorized under COMELEC Resolution Number no. 10717, Comelic officials, personnel na magsusumilite ng hard copies ng certificates of candidacy at related documents materials sa Comelec main office. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Armed Forces of the Philippines and Philippine National Police is ready to deploy medical contingents to augment the health system capability of hospitals in the national capital region. Lea Ilagan details why. The Armed Forces of the Philippines will deploy five medical teams in National Capital Region to help medical workers amid a rising number of COVID-19 patients. Two teams will come from Philippine Army and one each from the AFP Health Services Command, Philippine Navy and Philippine Air Force. Each team is composed of one doctor, one nurse and three aid men. The Philippine National Police, on the other hand, will also position 150 members of their medical reserve force. The Philippine National Police is committing its medical reserve force for augmentation to both public and private medical facilities amid reports of full capacity in hospitals and shortage of medical personnel. Aside from this, there are also 2,500 policemen with medical background that can be trained and deployed if needed. Kapatiran at pagtutulungan ang kailangan upang matiyak ang tagumpay natin sa laban na ito kaya nananawagan din tayo na pakiisa sa ating mga sa pamagitan ng pagsapuso ng pagsunod sa mga alituntuning pangkaligtasan upang patuloy na mabawasan ang mga dapat alagaan at gamutin sa panahon ng pandemya. The AFP and PNP's deployment of personnel is in response to President Duterte's appeal to help the government's effort to battle the pandemic. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Private companies have procured their own COVID-19 vaccines for their employees and dependents. But the health department cautions these companies may not use their vaccine supplies to inoculate minors. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Some private companies have manifested to procure more COVID-19 vaccines. This is the government announced that inoculation of minors may start in October. But the Department of Health reminds these companies that vaccine supply in the country are primary allotted for those who belong to the priority sector. They all went through this tripartite agreement with the national government. And isa po dun sa mga condition, dun sa tripartite agreement na yon, ay yung mga nagpo-procure po na from the private should abide and should align uh, with the national government guidelines. The Philippine Food and Drug Administration already expanded the emergency use authorization of Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines on children aged 12 to 17 years old. Nevertheless, the government has not given a go signal yet on the vaccination of the said age group. 
Sa ngayon po, wala pa ho tayong rekomendasyon para mag-umpisa ng pagbabakuna sa mga kabataan. Kaya dapat po yung po mga private sector with tripartite agreements ay sumusunod po dun sa mga pamantayan at guidelines ng national government. Last Wednesday, Vaccine Czar and National Task Force against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. formally proposed to President Rodrigo Duterte to start the COVID-19 vaccination of minors in mid-October. Secretary Galvez told the President to prioritize those with comorbidities and children of health workers. He also said almost 50 million COVID-19 vaccines are expected to arrive in the country by next month that can be used for the inoculation of 12 million Filipino minors aged 12 to 17 years old. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The National Chain Storage Facility in Marikina City assures enough storage for the bulk of vaccines expected to arrive next month. The cold storage facility also assures proper handling to avoid wastage. JP Nunez reports why live. Uh, yes, JP, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, William, good evening. The Philippines already received three shipments of Pfizer vaccines this week, which was procured by the national government and some coming from the donations of the private sector. But this number may multiply next month according to the National Task Force Against COVID-19 as millions of doses of Pfizer vaccines are expected to arrive. This includes the donations from United States through the COVAX facility. Actually, uh, next, uh, next uh, mga deliveries natin, uh, we will be increasing uh, by, uh, by 2 million by next, uh, next, uh, next delivery by October. So we are expecting to, to have more. Dahil ang uh, expected natin is 5 million na uh, procured natin. And then also, we will be receiving more of 5.6 million of the COVAX Pfizer. William, with the bulk of vaccine supply, the national partner of the government for the cold chain facility assures there is enough storage for this. PharmaServe Express warehouse manager Abigail Rivilla also attests to conduct proper measures to avoid wastage of vaccines. The storage facility can handle up to 50 million doses of vaccine, which is enough for the expected supply to arrive next month. Uh, sa ngayon naman po, uh, confident naman ang PharmaServe na makapag-store ng around 40 to 50 million doses ng vaccines natin. Sa ngayon po, mas nagiging strict kami sa pag-monitor ng temperature ng vaccines natin, ng biothermal packaging system, ng ginagamit nating boxes for delivery ng vaccines natin. Uh, meron po tayong mga pharmacist or the quality control inspectors na nagmamonitor ng temperature ng boxes bago natin ilabas. Meanwhile, William, 1.7 million additional doses of Pfizer vaccine is expected to arrive in the country tonight. That is our latest live. Back to you, William. Yes, thank you very much. JP Nunez reporting live. A formerly employee admits she was instructed to change the production dates of the face shields that they supplied to the government. This after a lawmaker presented an interview with an individual who claims to be a warehouse employee of Farmali. However, her boss denies any involvement. Arlene Delgado details why. Senator Riso Ontiveros presented during the 9th Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing a video who claims to be a warehouse staff of formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation. The lawmaker did not disclose the identity of the employee for his safety. He alleges that formerly official Crisel Grace Mago instructed them to repack face shields, which he described as soiled and substandard, and to change its production dates. Bali, yung mga certificate po na nakalagay sa mga dumarating na face shield po kasi is mga expired po siya. Production date po niya is 2020, year 2020 pa po. Then ang pinapagawa po sa amin nila ma'am is palitan po siya ng certificate na updated this year po. According to the employee, they have no protective gear such as gloves while repacking the face shields that were meant for healthcare workers. The face shields were allegedly part of the medical supply orders of the Department of Health. Kahit po, UPUP na mga face shield, UPUP na yung mga boxes, may mga madumi, pinaparipaparin sa amin po yun. Naninilaw na po yung mga foam niya, kasi iba, mga nahingitim na po, kasi sa sobrang taga na po na na-stack sa warehouse din po siguro nila na 
pinaglalagyan po bago po i-deliver dun sa amin. Wala po silang pinapatapon sa amin na face shield. The employee went on to say he decided to speak up due to the anomalies involving the deals with the government. Parang talagang sobrang anomalya po nang ginawa nila dun sa bidding na nakuha nila dun sa DOH. Tapos ang gagawin pa po nila is yung mga ipapadala po po nila mga patient and then mga test kit, PCR test, tsaka mga ano pa po, is talaga pong substandard po. Mago admits to the changing of sticker dates of the face shields. She says she only acted upon the orders of formerly Corporate Secretary Mohit Dergani. This was a supply concern. I raised this concern to our management and that was the solution that was given to us. She just admitted that they were actually switching the uh, expiry dates. Tama po ba yun? Yes, Mr. Chairman. That is something that I cannot deny. So you were swindling the government? I believe that is the case, Mr. Chairman. However, Dargani denies giving such instruction. The instruction did not come from me. Um, I believe it was um, Krizel asked it in our group um, if um, this is advi- if this is doable. Um, but the, if the instruction came from me, it did not come from me. Conteveros has made a motion before the committee to place Mago under protective custody. Meanwhile, the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee orders the transfer of formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation Director Lin Kun Ong from Senate detention to Pasay City Jail as senators say he is once again being evasive with his answers. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Lawmakers are pushing to increase the funds that will be appropriated to the Department of Trade and Industry for fiscal year 2022. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. The Department of Trade and Industry is asking for an additional budget to help businesses affected by the economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. During the budget deliberation, Taguig 2nd District Representative Mariela Arni Cayetano supported the call pushing a 10,000 peso livelihood grant for each registered MSMEs. If we give all registered MSMEs in the country 10,000 pesos livelihood grant, that would require a budget of 10 billion pesos. Ang 10 billion peso po is roughly 2% lang of the 5 billion pesos increase, but its impact on these businesses will be exponential. House Appropriations Committee Vice Chairperson Quezon Representative David Suarez also supported the proposal. According to the DTI, currently there are around 1 million registered MSMEs and approximately 6 million unlisted small businesses in the country. The agency proposed a 1 billion peso budget for the Pangkabuhayan sa Pagbangon at Ginhawa Initiative for 76,140 MSMEs. With the increase in budget for 2022, um, we are looking at around 76,140 SMEs, MSMEs will benefit from this program of livelihood uh, from the Department of Trade and Industry. Four lawmakers already filed a resolution urging the House of Representatives to increase the funds that will be appropriated to the DTI. Lawmakers are calling for at least 1.623 billion increase in the DTI's budget to serve MSMEs affected by the pandemic. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines today recorded no new deaths related to coronavirus disease or COVID-19. The Department of Health or DOH explained that this was due to the technical issue encountered by its COVID-19 data system. With this, the country's COVID-19 death toll remained at 37,405. Meanwhile, the country's cumulative case count jumped to 2,453,328, of which 175,324 are active cases. The DOH recorded 18,659 new cases. 88% of the sick patients have mild symptoms. 6.9% are asymptomatic. 2.84% are moderate, 1.5% are severe, and 0.7% are in critical condition. Also, there were 9,088 more patients who have recovered. These brought the recovery total to 2,240,599. Meanwhile, the overall global COVID-19 caseload has reached to 230 million. 
667,911, while the deaths have surged to 4,730,188, according to the Johns Hopkins University. The U.S. is the worst hit country, with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 42,674,082 and 684,360 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India follows with 33,594,803 cases and 446,368 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 592,964 fatalities. The Department of Foreign Affairs will soon open more temporary off-site passport or top sites in different parts of the country. Janice Ingente will tell us why. The Department of Foreign Affairs confirmed that they still have 2.3 million backlogs in passport applications. This is still due to the limited capacity in their consular offices. According to DFA, the long key in their main office in Ashana in the past days was due to the transfer of passport appointments. Some consular offices in the NCR had to be temporarily closed for disinfection. The situation was aggravated by the big number of applicants who were personally picking up their passport at the DFA following the issue with the department's previous courier service provider. Because of this, the DFA decided to relocate the passport releasing site to the Double Dragon Plaza in Panzai City. Hindi pa po natin sa Double Dragon Plaza, just a couple of blocks away yung uh, ating passport releasing site. Uh, para sa convenience ng ating mga kababayan, hindi po sila pipila sa init ng araw, kundi sa loob ng isang air conditioning. Uh, sa tingin po namin ay mas maganda po yon para sa kanila. And In addition, the DFA is scheduled to open additional temporary off-site passport sites as an extension of their consular offices. In the coming months, the DFA will open top sites in San Pedro, Laguna, Olongapo, Cebu, and Davao City. Bukod po dyan, mayroon pa pong uh, plano na kung uh, top sites na bubuksan sa iba't ibang probinsya pa, kamukha ng Iloilo, kamukha ng uh, Pangasinan, uh, and uh, all of these are to be located near uh, existing consular offices. Bali magiging uh, extension offices po, po sila ng ating uh, uh, consular offices. Janice Inhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. For the news abroad, an improved Communicable Disease Act is set to be forwarded to the Parliament when a new parliamentary session takes place in November. The Act is intended to handle a serious public health emergency or communicable diseases such as COVID-19. The committee's chairman or the prime minister has the authority to impose a curfew and lockdown and order state agencies to cooperate with the committee. Currently, Thailand is under an emergency decree wherein Prime Minister Prayu chan cha and Public Health Minister Anutin chan Wirakul are spearheading the Center for COVID-19 Situation Administration, or CCSA. Meanwhile, the extension of the current emergency decree due to the pandemic, which started March 2020 and is due to expire on September 30, will be decided on the next meeting of CCSA this Monday. The European Union announced its plan to impose a standard cable for all devices with the aim of cutting back on electronic waste. But Apple disagrees. Joselito Liquido will give us the details live. Yes, Joselito? Good evening, Kath. The use of the USB Type-C as a standard cable could affect Apple and its widely used iPhone more than its rivals. Asitgar argues that a universal charger would deter innovation and create even more pollution. European Union, Union Executive Vice President Margrethe Visiger said that the European consumers have been frustrated about the growing pile of incompatible chargers in their drawers, and it's now time for legislative action. According to the EU, device users spend around 2.4 billion euros per year buying standalone chargers. Meanwhile, Apple insists that the new legislation is unwarranted and slows innovation rather than encouraging it. 
and will harm European and global consumers alike. Currently, consumers have three main options for chargers, the Lightning for Apple handsets, the widely used micro USB for other smartphones, and the USB type C, which is becoming more and more popular. Kath? Yes, so Salito, how many device users will be affected by this proposal? Kath once approved the member states and the European Parliament. The legislation will affect more than 450 million people in Europe, including some of the world's richest consumers. Although it is seen by others that if other countries follow the EU, it may provide their consumers a longer-term benefit on cost savings. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Joselito Liquidor, reporting live. The United Nations' first virtual food system summit looks for recipes to tackle the dysfunction of food system globally. Jay Robles tells us why, live. As millions and millions of people are experiencing hunger, while one-third of the global food supply goes to waste. And while billions of consumers around the world are overweight, world hunger and malnutrition rose by 600% last year from around 118 million to 768 million. The way foods are being produced, processed, and marketed is also a major problem. United Nations said the current global food system generates one-third of greenhouse gas emissions. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told the, the first global summit on the future of food that the food systems must support the health and well-being of all people and protect the planet. Furthermore, the Secretary General called on the global community to change the approach on agricultural subsidies. He also urged people to evaluate how we see and value food and not just as a commodity to be traded. Meanwhile, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinta Ardern suggested to grow food where the environment supports it best and where emissions efficiency is at its greatest. The Prime Minister also suggested to minimize the barriers to trade and efficient distribution. Back to you, Cass. Jane, what was the outcome of the UN Food Summit? Did they mention any policies to address the crisis on the food system? Yes, Cass. Uh, there was a roadmap introduced at the summit that aims to show how capital can be shifted from a high-carbon uh, high and equal food system into models that add value for people, planet, and economy. The roadmap could unlock $4.5 trillion in new business opportunities and ensure a more sustainable food system. Kath? Thank you, Jane Robles, reporting live. Experts share that going back to the basics is still the best way to prevent wrinkles and possess a better looking skin. Annie Mancilia tells us why, live. Yes, Annie? Good evening, Cass. A glass of water and fresh foods are revealed to provide more benefits for the skin than taking non-proven supplements, according to experts. Professor Claire Collins from the University of Newcastle Nutrition and Dietetics said, people should prioritize on improving health from within. Professor Collins suggested eating foods which are rich in proteins, vitamin C, A, and zinc will provide more benefits as they aid the body in making its own collagen. Moreover, according to Dr. Carl Kuzilnecki, an Australian science commentator and author, based on clinical trials, benefits from collagen supplement is backed up by limited data to support its claims of making the skin better and can remove wrinkles. He added that the collagen protein is too big to enter our cells and be absorbed in the bloodstream. This claim was also supported by pharmacist Dr. Geraldine Moses. She insisted that collagen does not get absorbed in the body and this only became popular when it was used as lips and cheeks filler. Kath? Any beauty supplements are getting popular nowadays. Aside from collagen, is there any other supplement that people should be mindful of? Yes, Kat. Another beauty supplement which is widely available is silica. This is marketed to encourage skin, hair, and nail health. However, according to research, silica with scientific name silicon dioxide, which is sand in supplement form, also lacks effectiveness, according to experts. Back to you, Kat. Thank you, Annie Mancilia, for that live report. 
And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I'm Kat Dumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God. From the book of James, chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. And those are the reasons behind the news, September 24, 2021. I'm Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Emmanuel Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Magtiwala kayo. Pagdating sa usapin ng halalan, isa lang ang nasa isip ko. Siguruhin na mawakasan ang uri ng pamumunong ugat ng pagdurusa, paghihirap at pagkamatay ng napakarami sa atin. Mula ako sa deadline, umuusad ang panahon. Sa huli, mangyayari ang dapat mangyari. You cannot rush these things and uh, I, I, I fully intend to take um, all the available time that I have to make that to make my decision. Uh, again, it's uh, very important and it's not something that should be rushed without having um, uh, the most complete knowledge about the situation, the political situation at every level. Between the announcement and the filing, marami pang pwedeng mangyari. So that's first. Number two, uh, hindi pa naman tapos ang usapin ng uh, unity. Tuloy-tuloy naman po ang usapin na magkaisa ang mga uh, kandidato. Gusto ko sa lahat ng buong Pilipinas na peaceful and people can vote freely for their candidates and that the votes there will be the votes and it will be counted correctly. Yun lang naman ang gusto natin lahat eh. Nobody wants trouble, nobody wants cheating.